All right, so I am finally ready to do the last black stripe along here. I have those two on that side, which probably from the uh, camera view, or at least to the naked eye, it looks pretty good. But if you zoom in to that point, uh, there's some areas I need to touch up. There's some spots that aren't, uh, aren't quite right. But um, like I said, just looking at it with the naked eye, it's, it's uh, not too bad. But the touch-up shouldn't be, shouldn't be too difficult. What I'll do is once the whole thing is painted, I'll, I'll do any touch-up after that because there are a few places that uh, y'all have to, have to fix. So I'm ready to do the last one here. And so far up to this point, I haven't really shown you any, um, like, masking or anything. I just assumed that, you know, most people know how, but, um, you know, I can't really, I can't really assume that. Um, and also because me doing this, I'm not even sure. I, mean, I guess I couldn't say I assume most people know how because I'm not even positive I really know how. I'm just, uh, I'm just doing it and, and, and so far it seems to be working okay. But I'm sure there's better ways. I, I guarantee you there's better ways than the way I've been doing it. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of you out there who could have masked off everything and, uh, you know, painted all the, you know, yellow at once and painted all the black at once. Now I did the blue on both sides at the same time. And the way I did that was I used, I used this tape and I went until I masked it off until the width, um, kind of ended at the point. I didn't want to have to cut the tape to the point. So I masked it off as far as I could with the tape, and then from there I used a uh, liquid mask, which um, should have around here. Oh, it's right here. I used this. It's uh, Easy Mask, and I swear it's nothing more than just Blue Elmer's glue. I mean, I don't know it. it maybe there's more to it than that. But you brush that on. Once it dries, you cut the shape you want, and you just peel off. You know, and it just leaves behind a, a thin liquid mask. And that's what I did um, on both sides for the blue. But I noticed when I cut the line for the blue, um, my cut line wasn't like perfectly straight. Which is okay because the yellow kind of hid that. So I could use that to mask off the point for the, for the where, it, where it gets really skinny there. But again, I would have to make sure I cut a perfectly straight line and... I know I couldn't cut a line as straight as tape could leave. So that's why I didn't use that for those. So anyways, I'll show you how I've been doing it. Again, whether it's the best way, um, I, I really doubt. I'm using this uh, Tamaya mask. I think this is, a, this is, I think, a six millimeter. And I have a 10 millimeter. Uh, this stuff is fairly thin. It lays down nicely. Uh, it's just, I'm sure there's other tapes that would work just as well, but for me, uh, this this uh, works good enough. So I'm basically, um, I'm just going to gently lay it on there to get it started, and I'll leave plenty at the front that I can, that I can hang on to. And I kind of start at the back, and I'm just going to get it, see if I can get that in the, in the view here. I'm just going to put it right on the edge of that yellow until I can just, yes, sorry, I just got distracted. Somebody's car horn is going off outside. Um, just lay it on that yellow until it's just on that edge. And then take this right down and that's about it here. Now, before I press it down fully for good, I'm gonna go over the length with this make sure it's perfectly on that edge and um, so I'll get that straight again it's kind of hard to do with the camera but I'm just getting the edge perfectly matched up with the yellow edge so let me fine-tune that and uh, get back with you all right so I've got that positioned I think about as good as I can get it um, I went in with uh, a blade and I just cut the tape right along here because if I tried to force it in there, it would probably um, kind of skew the tape a little bit, and that line would end up being a little bit curved. And um, 
you know, the engine inlet's going to cover this area up anyways. I'm going to have to remove all of this paint for the glue to work there anyways. But um, anyway, so the edge of the tape is as best as I can get it perfectly aligned with the edge of the yellow. And at the end, um, the end gets a little bit tough because uh, that the yellow stripe down at that point, I mean, it tapers off to pretty much nothing. Um, but like I said, I've got it to about as best as I can I can get it. So I'm just going to uh, trim the tape off here and then roll that around. And again, hopefully you can kind of tell now that if I tried to cut the tape to mask off more than one stripe at a time, the point of that tape would be like really, really skinny. And it would like move and flex around. It would lift off easier. And again, I'm sure some of you out there could do it. And if that's the case, um, go right ahead. Whatever works for you, um, you're better than me, which probably isn't hard. So uh, anyways, I got a nice wide tape wrapping around. That'll help hold that line steady while I paint it. And I don't know if you can pick it up from the camera or not, but there's a little bit of white. I'm not sure what happened here, but a little bit of white chipped off right here. Now the black will go over top of that, but when it's all done, like I said, I'm going to have to do some touch-up. That is one of the touch-ups I'm going to have to do is right in here. All right, so that was the easy one. Uh, next up, we'll do the next the next tape line. And to do that, I need to find my calipers uh, because I want to make sure it's the same thickness as the one on that side. So uh, usually they're like laying right here. And if you guys could see my workshop, it would not surprise you at all that I can't find them. And actually, as I was talking, I just found them. They were uh, laying under some other stuff. So um, anyways, this doesn't have to be super accurate. Um, these are probably the cheapest calibers, calipers you could buy, and I probably got them like 20 years ago. Uh, as long as when you push it home, the needle's on zero, you know, that's, that's close enough. And again, it's, it's just for reference. Um, it's just to make sure that the new stripe is the same size as the old stripe. Not the old stripe, but the, the one on the same side. So I'm going to pick a spot. Uh, there's, there's like a panel line right here. So I'm going to measure the width of that stripe. And I'm being very careful not to touch the paint with the point of the calipers because I don't want to scratch it. I'm just getting over there as best as I can. And just, you know, eyeball in the width of that. And um, that'll give me an idea for over here. So what I can do is I'm just going to take a piece of scrap tape that uh, I trimmed off the end. And I'm just going to eyeball it, lay it on, like about here. And I'm going to see if that's the right distance back. And then that'll give me an edge to lay that tape on. So again, I can't really do that very well with the camera here between me and this. So let me just do this uh, off camera here and uh, we'll show you what that looks like. All right, so I have the little marker tape there pretty much right where it should be, thick -wise, thickness wise. Now I just laid this tape on, um, I didn't press it down, didn't stick it down. And of course now it's not cooperating. But I'm just going to get this edge right on the point of that tape and hold it here. I'm going to take the rest of this and as best as I can, just kind of eyeball it right down the front, right to the point. And I'll give it a once over. And what I'll do is everywhere there's a panel line like here, and here, one here. I'll compare the thickness that I just masked off with the thickness of the stripe right above it. So I'm just going to keep comparing that thickness along the ways with the with the thickness of the stripe here, repositioning the tape until it's until it's right where I want it. So again, gets a little bit uh, time consuming. Um, so again, I'll do that off camera here, and uh, I'll get back with you in just a second. Alright, so it's uh, if you're not careful, it's really easy to get the line uh, too too wide, too thick. Um, but as best as I can get it, that's uh, fairly even thickness all the way to about here. Then it starts tapering off. At the very front, 
and I'll go and trim this off. And this is actually wide enough that when it wraps around, it could overlap on the other side. So I'm just going to trim that corner a little bit here. And at the front, like I said, it's it gets almost almost non-existent stripe-wise. Let me see if I can zoom in on that a little bit. Maybe. I mean, it almost looks like the tape is touching back here, but there's just there's a little bit of a gap, and hopefully just enough for the paint to get through. And uh, so I know it's kind of hard to tell. Let me try to focus that back down here again. And before I mask off the rest, um, I will go over that again with this just to make sure. Because um, if it's too close too soon, then the black stripe will disappear before it gets all the way to the point. And this is the last one. So far, the first three have, have uh, come out pretty decently. So it'd be nice if the last one came out as nice as well. So um, after this, uh, once I verify that's all good, then the next step is just to mask off the rest of this. And, you know, I don't tape the entire tail here. What I do is I grab a piece of... Uh, you know, plastic from a grocery bag or something, and I'll wrap it around the tail and just kind of tape it here and along here, so um, just so I don't get any overspray anywhere else. So, and um, the paint that I'm using is so this one, yeah, it's just classic black. This is the Model Masters uh, enamel, classic black, and the airbrush I'm using is uh, this guy right here. It's an Iwata Eclipse. I bought this probably, I don't know, um, 15 years ago. I do have about three airbrushes, but this just seems to be the one I always grab. Um, the others are decent enough. They're good. One of them's actually a, a nicer name brand, more expensive one. This, I think, was 20 or 30 bucks. But it, for me, it, the thing works great. So... Um, that's what I'm using. So, uh, yeah, I'll finish masking this off, uh, off camera, just because it is kind of time consuming and boring. And I'll shoot the black on it and I'll show you what it looks like after that. All right. So, uh, just got that painted. And, um, what I'm going to do is just kind of let that tack on there until I get the brush cleaned. So one thing I don't know if I mentioned yet or not, as far as airbrushing um, and again I'm not claiming to be the best at it I definitely need to practice more I think my results come out okay better than well better than okay I think um, I've seen better but at the same time I've also seen worse in my opinion I think my paint jobs are very acceptable um, but one common issue with uh, airbrushing, getting color on, is having the paint bleed under the tape. And again, you got to make sure that the tape is pressed down very tight, very good. Um, make sure that your first layer, your first coat, is just a misting, like a almost like a dry mist. That'll kind of bridge the gap between, or any gaps between the tape and the model so that the next layers uh, will have a harder time kind of bleeding under. So, you know, just kind of put a little dry brushing on or a, a dusting on it. Let that set for a few seconds. Doesn't really take much. And then go ahead and put a little bit of a heavier layer and then a little bit of a heavier layer and then you can do a really good solid coat. Just don't, uh, you know, less is more. Uh, several lighter layers is much better than one heavier layer. So I'm just wiping out any excess paint from the brush. I'm going to run some cleaner through it, run some thinner through it, and clean that all out. Once that's done, then that'll be skinned over enough to where I can take the masking off. It'll still be wet, and it'll still make a mess if I'm not careful, but it'll be easier to take the masking off at that point. So let me get the airbrush all cleaned up, and I'll come back and I'll unmask it here for you. All right, when you're ready to unmask it, um, you got to be careful, obviously, because if you do it while it's still wet, 
Um, obviously, you get paint all over your fingers. You leave fingerprints all over your model. It just makes a big mess. However, if you if you let it dry too much when you pull the tape off, it could actually peel the paint. You know, the paint will kind of dry up onto the tape. Then when you peel the tape off, it'll kind of peel the paint off of the model. So what I choose to do, uh, what I found works pretty well, is just kind of let it dry a little bit. Like I said, about the time it takes to clean the airbrush. It's still very soft, very wet. I can very easily leave a fingerprint in it. But um, as long as I'm careful, I won't make a mess. And I try not to touch the model as much as, as, much as possible. Um, or at least I try to, when I do have to touch the model, I try to hold it in areas that are not painted yet. So peeling off the, uh, the plastic first, and it's already starting to take the tape off that I don't want it to take off yet. Um, so what I'm going to do here, take that one, and I may just cut that because I'm not ready for that to come off yet. Just peel the plastic off. Let it touch any of the wet paint. And if you can remember how you laid the tape on, uh, you could kind of take it off in reverse order, which I honestly, I don't know if I remember that or not, but that looks like a good piece to take off first on that back side. And trying to start the tape in an area that, you know, like right here is going to be covered anyway, so if I do leave a fingerprint here, no big deal. And I probably didn't really need to completely tape off that back side the way I did. Because I'm only painting on this side. I really don't think overspray would wrap around to get on there. But again, better safe than sorry. I don't want to take any chances with it. So, uh, in my opinion, if you don't want paint on it, then tape it off. And I have a pair. There we go. I say tweezers. Um, being careful not to scratch because that's white finished paint here. Don't want to scratch that, but just lift that edge. And let's see, get a spot here. So there's just one more piece here for the stripe. I'm going to move to the other side here. Start taking some of this off the bottom. And if you do touch it and leave a fingerprint, which I have not yet, I don't think, but if you do, this part isn't painted yet, so that's okay. If you do, the worst thing you can do is panic and try to remove it right away. You know, just, uh, and again, lessons I have learned the hard way. Just let it go, let it dry, and you can sand it back and uh, deal with it later. There's the last piece of tape on the bottom edge. Trying to put the tape down in a pile without touching the wet paint. It's also a little bit of a challenge here. So since I cut the tape here, that didn't give me an easy edge to start lifting the tape from. So I'm making sure I'm picking in an area that will be completely covered. Again, once that inlet goes on, you're not going to see that. And that's not wanting to come off. Let me see if I can get another spot. But uh, just trying not to disturb or scratch anything. Come on. There we go. Come on. I think I can grab that with the tweezers now. There we go. 
So, let's take a look at that. I think that looks just as good as any of the others. I'm not sure how well it's coming up on camera. But again, where they come to a point in the front, I know I keep saying this. I feel like I'm repeating myself a whole bunch. But where it comes to a point of that front is very difficult. Fortunately, it is small enough that to the naked eye, you can't really tell if it's perfect or not. But I'm sure it will need a little bit of touch up. But uh, like I said, I'm just going to let that, I'm going to let that cure for about three days. And then we'll bond on the inlets on each side. And then we'll start painting, uh, I think the next step will be, once the inlets are on, I'll paint the blue all the way back. Then the yellow, then the black. Now this back here, I'll be able to mask off and do all of the blue at once, both sides, and all of the yellow at once, both sides, and then all of the black on both sides. So hopefully, it'll only be three more painting steps. That's what I'm hoping for, three more painting steps. Um, so... And what I did, though, already, there is, um, there is an emblem that goes on the tail here. Now, the tail's already painted in the white color that this is. I know it's kind of hard to tell between the white and the primer white, looking at it like this, but that is the final white. I need to mask off. It's like mountains, mountain scene and airplane. I need to mask that off first before I paint that blue, because the mountains are white with some black details. So I'll have to do that. But again, this just needs to sit for a few days. Um, so they don't leave any fingerprints on it when I start masking off to do the blue. So, anyways, um, I'll, uh, I'm not going to end the video here. I'll, I'll, when I come back, we'll be ready to paint the blue here. So, anyways, that'll be a few days later. So, uh, back to you in a bit. Okay, it's, uh, finally time to put our engine inlets and cowlings on. Pretty, uh, straightforward. Those go on like that, and then one of these goes on like that. And I will be using, it's not gonna stay because it's just gonna slide off, but I will be using this. Now, in order for this to stick, the um, paint here has to be removed, so it's right about this time when I start to regret not masking that off first. But not that big of a deal, I will use like cotton swabs or a piece of paper towel, very lightly moistened in thinner. Uh, again, I don't want it completely soaking wet because I don't want to press here and have it run out and mess up the paint around here because that would be very bad. So um, let me get that paint cleaned up. And again, it's just, it's, it's an easy thing. I don't really know as if you want to spend the next several minutes watching me just swipe off paint with the Q-tip. So um, I'll get back with you in the paints off when we're ready to actually bond those in place. All right, so the uh, paint is removed from both sides. Uh, I actually scraped off most of it with this just to get the bulk off. Then I used a uh, cotton swab just very lightly soaked with um, thinner to uh, just kind of wipe off the rest. Before I glue these on, I got to show you guys something. I, I just got my latest eBay purchase in the mail uh, yesterday. I got to show you this. This is awesome. Are you ready? Here, let's move this piece of crap out of the way here. Take a look at this. Is that awesome or what? 120th scale. Big 120th scale. The Dodge Stealth. How awesome is the Dodge Stealth? Yeah, I know it sucks. But this was only five bucks on eBay. You know, for five bucks, you can't afford to not buy it. I mean, seriously. Um, yeah, I kind of, kind of hate to admit, but you know, back in high school, Dodge Stealth was like my dream car. Until the Dodge Viper came out, then this thing was a piece of junk. But um, anyways, for five bucks, I mean, it's um, it is broken, which is a shame. Um, I was going to, uh, I was going to comment back to the seller, said, you know, you sold me a broken model because. The seller said that it was in perfect shape, nothing wrong with it, except for the box was kind of messed up. But um, And I did go back and look at the photos, and in the photos, it's not broken. So I think it just got broken in the shipping. And it's probably so old, the plastic is brittle anyways. But that should be easy enough to fix. This is one of these, uh, this is one of those kits that will go on the far way back burner, if you know what I mean. Like when I'm really bored and got nothing else to work on, then I might pull this out and throw it together. 
but um, like I said, it was five bucks. If it would have been six, I think it would have been like, eh, no, maybe not. But for five, I bought it. So anyways, don't expect to see this on a near future video, maybe in a few years. Um, I've got several other kits that I would much rather build the net. But anyways, I just thought I'd show, you, show that to you. I thought it was kind of funny. Um, but, uh, you know, they say big 120th scale, but it actually doesn't look as big as I was imagining when I got it. I, I don't build a whole lot of 120th, but it doesn't seem that much bigger than 124th. Um, anyways, anyways, back to the important thing here, back to this. So again, I'm going to use this. Now this bottle is getting kind of low and it's getting a little contaminated. I don't know if you can see that in here, probably not, but it's a little dark because what happens when you use the brush to brush on, you know, you're going to get a little bit of that plastic transfer onto the brush and that gets back into the bottle. So the, um, that liquid in there, again, you probably can't see it, but the liquid in here is getting a little bit dark because I was using this on that poacher model. So I'm going to grab another bottle of this and the cool thing is I, I, you know, I should have done this before I started rolling camera again. Let me get all of this stuff out of the way. Um, I used to get this at the hobby shop for like, it was seven bucks a bottle. And so I went online once the hobby shop closed, I went online to see if I can buy new and I got a case of the stuff. Um, how many is in here? Like 12 maybe? No, there's more than 12. Uh, well, I guess, you know, I could open it and find out. Um, a oh, 12. See, that's what it, uh, I don't know. I'm going to drop this on that airplane. That's what it looks like, you know. So there were 12 of them in there. As you can see, I've already gone through three and a half. But I'm going to start with a fresh bottle, just because that's almost empty. The brush doesn't dip in there very well. And it does have some black in it. So, um, so I got a case of 12 for $47. $47, bucks. I forget how much shipping was. But um, I... That it, it was way less than the seven bucks a bottle that I was paying for at the hobby shop. Now I'm, I'm all about supporting your local hobby shops because if you don't, they'll close like mine did, which sucks. But um, if you don't have any place near you, or if yours closes, then uh, you know you don't really have a choice but to go online. And this is really dangerous for me to be opening a full bottle of this right next to the airplane I just painted. But um, I'll try to be extra careful here. So, I only need it, you know, it only makes contact around the edge here. And normally what I would do is I would put the, I would put the solvent or the glue on the biggest part and then put the smaller part on it. Um, I just want to be very careful not to let it run or drip anywhere else. So, I'm just going to very carefully apply this along the edge. It actually wasn't too much. I knocked a little bit off the brush. Um, just kind of brushing it on and it will right away it starts softening the plastic and there should be a little bit on that point right there. And that was a little bit much there but I think we'll be okay. And then we'll go ahead and put this in position. And I can already feel it kind of starting to grab it. So we'll just put it in a position and just kind of hold it a little bit. And that should start to take, grab in place. And I'm gonna put just a little bit on that seam. And what that should do is capillary action should pull it into the seam and just help bond that on even better. All right, and I mean it's it's not falling off right now. It's uh, it's definitely not dry, dry, but uh, it's it's not coming off. Okay, so and then the next step obviously is going to be the intake piece. I already pre-painted flat black on the inside lip. I'm leaving the inside gray because I mean even when it's on, you really can't see back there anymore, and the natural shadows will be will be fine. And uh, that will just get bonded on in the same manner, right like that, okay? 
So I'm going to do that and the other two pieces off camera just because it's time consuming and this video is already getting to be way too long. So uh, we'll come back when that's all together. All right, so I got those on. Now I did screw up. I got a fingerprint right here. I don't know how well it's gonna show on the camera. Um, yeah, I kind of didn't follow my own advice because when I put this one on, I was holding this piece and I applied the solvent to the edges and then I put it on. Well, some of that solvent rolled around the edge and got between my finger and the part and it left that fingerprint here. Now, the reason why I'm showing this is because I, it's a good opportunity to let you know that when you do something like that, because I'm sure everybody does stuff like that on occasion, on occasion, uh, when you do screw up, whether it's from glue or paint or whatever, the worst thing you can do is panic and try to fix it right away. Uh, just leave it. Leave it. Just let it completely dry. You can always sand it back. If you uh, need to, you can rescribe the panel lines. Uh, but if you try to wipe it off right away, it's just going to smear. It's going to make the problem worse. So just leave it. Take care of it when it's all said and done. Um, so I will need to go in and sand up here a little bit and um, re-airbrush some white right up in there. But hopefully we can see now why I painted this front part without those on because the color actually goes under that lip a little bit. And I, I just think that looks better than if I would have done it a different way. Um, I'm going to let these fully set and fully, I'm going to let that solvent get time to fully set and cure. Um, I mean, they're on there and they're not falling off, but I don't want to start masking this uh, until that glue is completely, completely set and good to go. So um, I'm going to give that a day. Uh, I'll probably come back tomorrow morning, first thing tomorrow morning, and I'll start masking off to get the blue all over the tail. And part of that will be making a mask for here because there's like a mountain scene that would be here. So I need to make a mask for that. Now this video is getting way too long. So I'm actually going to end it here. The next video will be finishing up the paint and probably just finishing up the airplane itself. Um, so I'm going to be painting the back half, putting the wings on, horizontal stab, the engine exhaust piece, and any paint touch-up that I need to do. Um, hopefully I can squeeze all of that into the next video. You know, if I didn't talk so much, it'd be possible. Um, and then after that, I'm hoping we'll just be one more video to this, and that'll be making the base for that to set on. I have a pretty good idea of what I want to do with the base. So hopefully two more videos, this will be done. I hope, because I've got a lot of other projects that I'm just dying to start, um, but I'm making myself not start them until this is done. And then when that poacher model is done, I can start even more projects. Um, I've got a lot of cool stuff coming up, and uh, I'm just getting anxious, getting excited to get some other stuff started. And uh, yeah, so like I said, I talk too much. I'm just going to shut up. So as always, until next time, thanks for watching.